Hello everyone, today we're going to present the oral lesson for the best lesson contest for the Moose Trapper Challenge. So uh, today we will present, uh, we will study the phenomena of friction and adhesion, which play a big role in the car's performance. If true contact surfaces move or slide in relation to each other, there is friction. When these two surfaces do not move, it is called adhesion. The more adhesion there is, the more force will be needed. In the same way, if the car receives a great amount of force, it will move farther. That's why for a car to display the best performance, a lot of adhesion is needed at the start. However, the friction will cause the car to slow down and uh, travel less distance. That's, that's why uh, as less friction as possible is required. Our goal is to determine how the choice of the wheels material can impact the car's performance. We will start by explaining the adhesion. At the start, the car is in a state of balance and its speed is new. As stated by the first law of Newton, every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. The sum of the forces external to the mousetrap is equal to the force N of the first wheel, the second force N of the second wheel, the P is the race, and uh, all, of this, um, and all of this is equal to zero. We will first create a force we will tend to move the car, this one. However, the car won't move because it's stuck to the ground by adhesion. In fact, a force will be created on each wheel to compensate this force. You can see here. So the coefficient of adhesion can be represented as a cone. The resistance of the ground air will uh, tend to reach the limit of the cone. When it does, the car will start moving. However, we know that uh, the bigger the resistance is, the bigger the force applied to the car is. The car is moving, we can now study the friction for plastic wheels on the floor tiles. Same as the cone for, for adhesion, there is a cone for friction. Um, the, co the frictional coefficient is uh, also equal to the tangent of the phi angle and uh, since we need the smallest um, friction possible uh, we need the smallest value of uh, the phi angle that's why uh, having a small cone means uh, having a better performance here you can see some uh, examples of uh, the frictional coefficient depending on uh, the materials in contact how to determine this coefficient in our case uh, we can use uh, Newton's second law since the car is moving. Uh, it says the changes which occur in the movements are proportional to the driving force and are done in the straight line in which this force has been impressed. In this slide, it, it gives us uh, the following formula: uh, the sum of the forces external to the mousetrap car equals to uh, the two n forces plus the two t forces and uh, the weight p and it's equal to the mass times the acceleration a it gives us two formulas t equals minus m times a divided by 2 and n equals p divided by 2 to calculate the values of t and n we will first start by calculating uh, the acceleration with an experience first we'll measure the camera's uh, weight with the balance and we'll prepare a laser meter and a chronometer uh, we'll define a sta starting line for the mouse trap car and uh, we'll trigger the, the car and the chronometer at the same time. When the car stops, uh, we'll uh, stop the chronometer and measure the distance and time uh, of the car movement. Using the time and distance we got uh, from our experience, we can determine uh, three uh, differential equations. Uh, the acceleration is a constant. The speed is uh, the anti derivative of the acceleration. It's uh, a times t plus uh, v0, which is the initial speed. And uh, the anti derivative of the speed is the position x. What we know is that uh, t is the duration of the car's movement x is the measured travel distance, v equals 0 mps at the end of the movement, 
and x0 equals 0 meters, the starting line. By uh, using the, form, the equations, we get v equals a times t plus v0 equals 0. So v0 equals minus a times t. Uh, we substitute the, the expression of v0 into the x equation. So it gives us a equals minus 2x divided by t squared. And since we know t uh, equals minus m times a divided by 2, uh, we play with the two formulas and we get t uh, equals mx divided by 2t squared. We have the values of uh, the experience. We use those values to replace them into um, the n and t uh, formulas and we get t equals 0.006 t2 newton and n equals 0.265 newton. After finding these values, we can calculate, finally calculate the frictional coefficient with uh, t divided by n and it gives us uh, 0.023. To conclude, we saw that the value of the friction coefficient is really important for the car's performance as it has uh, an impact on the car's acceleration and the distance it can reach. This coefficient varies depending on the material used for the world. By calculating the frictional coefficient, we can determine the best material for the car's wheels and the road uh, and get uh, the best result possible. The small value we found can be due to the floor not being a completely plain uh, surface or to the fact that uh, the car didn't move in a straight line.